Hello and welcome to part one in this series of some critical but not prominent building trends of the 1880s and 1950s. So pretty much don't expect to see possibly what you were expecting to see. Because what you were expecting to see probably would take more than one or one slide for me to cover them in sufficient detail to both intrigue you and answer enough questions that you don't go away feeling slightly cheated. <laughs> so, let's start off with the 1880s. Now, hands up, who was expecting to see an Archer-class torpedo cruiser? These are, in many ways, the brainchild of Admiral Astley Cooper Key. Now, for those who aren't sure who Astley Cooper Key was, how do I put this politely? Well, he's first na uh, first sea lord, first naval lord. He has commanded the Na North American West Indies Station. He's commanded the Royal Navy College at Greenwich. His ships include Sands Parel, Amphibian Bulldog, HMS Admiralty. He fought in the Crimean War, the Second Opium War, and the Anglo-French blockade of Rio de la Plata. He is a fairly... by the book, but also, in some respects, innovative thinker for the Royal Navy. He managed to keep the Royal Navy to a budget. Which is interesting. This includes when ordering the Admiral class battleships. And, you know, making sure that, you know, the Royal Navy was properly prepared when it looked like it was going to be Britain and Russia going to war over Afghanistan, thanks to the uh, Panja incident in 1885. Well, he is also someone who foresees the capabilities of the torpedo. He's not sure how they're going to affect the Royal Navy. He's also not sure how effective torpedo ships are going to affect the Royal Navy. And I would argue that coming in at roughly 1,800 tons, it's an interesting figure, with a length overall of 73 meters, and a beam of 11 meters, and a draft of four and roughly four, point, four and a half meters and capable of 17 and a half knots at force draft thanks to their four and a half thousand horsepower they could generate at force draft from their four boilers and their uh, <clears throat> very interesting engine arrangement these are pretty much destroyers They're classed as third-class cruisers, They're, but they are designed to defeat torpedo boats, and they are designed to also scout for the fleet and go into shallow waters. They're armed with six six-inch guns, which is a pretty cool weaponry system. Six three-pounder guns, two machine guns, and... They have a 14-inch torpedo launcher in the bow, and two twin side-launching torpedo, 14-inch la torpedo launchers. So uh, they can fire a broadside of two torpedoes each side, and they can fire a torpedo forward. That is, there is. The lovely line from various other people is a disc design. These third class torpedo cruisers were taken over by torpedo destroy uh, by destroyers, by early destroyers. Well, yes, they were, but these were even earlier destroyers. These were destroyers before someone comes up with a name destroyer. I would argue this is sort of the genesis which ends up leading towards the tribal class destroyers in the 1930s. The idea is that you have a choice. You either build your bigger ships down, i.e. your cruisers smaller, or your smaller ships up. You can either build bigger torpedo boats that can go with the fleet, 
and can take out uh, uh, can match the destroyers and their capability or you have to build your cruisers small enough cheap enough you can mass produce them to cover the roll and it's having to work out which is the best way to go whether it's better to build something smaller to be bigger to take on that duty more powerful smaller vessel to take on that duty or build something which is normally bigger though standard stands smaller you can also if you want you know see in this the arafusa class cruisers the scout cruisers the various vessels which come in at certain points on our growing up and are part of trying to build a navy which can deal with emerging technologies the fact is those six inch guns and those three pounder guns they will make an absolute mess of anyone who attacks them who's small in the ship you know those guns might well be mounted on sponsons and you can see that if i expand it up more you can see it, see it quite clearly but they also have a range of 7,000 nautical miles at 10 knots that's good for something which is built between 18 and laid down in 1885 and are completed between 1887 and 1888 and most of them will serve until 1905 with one vessel serpent being wrecked in 1890 these vessels are good ships they are built at a cost of 87 1,500 pounds roughly each. Well, there are two of them which come in at 90, uh, 91 and a half thousand pounds, but the rest, 80, uh, the rest all come in at 87 and a half thousand pounds. That's six built by Thompson and Serpent and Raccoon are two built by Devonport, which cost more. The vessels in the class include Archer, Mohawk, which of course will be later used for a travel class destroyer, Brisk, Porpoise, Cossack, later used for a travel class destroyer, Tartar, later used for a travel class destroyer. There is a certain pattern going on here. The trouble is for these ships is that they are built at a time of change. They are built at a time when torpedoes are getting more powerful. And when cruisers, guns are getting more difficult. And it's interesting to note that they're sort of working out what they're going to be doing with them. And the six inch gun is an interesting gun. It's a very versatile weapon for a small ship of this sort of weight to have. Don't you know, the next class built after this is the last class really built of this sort of era, which are the Marathon class, and they're technically second class cruisers, displacing 2,845 tons, or 2,997 tons. So you go from a vessel which is the size of a tribal class destroyer, roughly, to the vessel which is the size of a daring class destroyer, from post Second War. And they're armed with far less torpedoes, but they're armed with six six inch guns and nine six pounder quick firing guns. And in many ways, they are even more focused on foreign service and anti destroyer work, dealing with torpedo boats in foreign stations. Because the idea is quite simple the Royal Navy's getting that. Yes, the Junicole is a bit silly, but flotilla defence isn't silly. It's viable, and smaller nations can invest and develop that far easier than they can large fleets. So they're becoming a problem. So you need something to go and deal with them. 
Now, you can also argue that these are in some ways the LCS of their day, the literal combat ship. I.e. the vessel which is large enough that a major power can send it around the world and not feel embarrassed, but has all the systems it needs to really dominate the literals. The thing is, I would argue these were actually quite successful at that idea, and the reason they got rid of, largely speaking, in 1905, is because they found that whilst they're very good, you they for the cruiser duties, the bigger ships are better at the cruising, and for the fighting the torpedo the boats and enemy destroyers, which are being developed at this point, in the waters of the North Sea, etc., it's better to go with your own torpedo boat destroyers, or as they they become destroyers. They're in that transition period, but they are a beautiful attempt to try and build for the Royal Navy an all-round capable ship, a ship with enough torpedoes that bigger ships don't really want to tangle with it, because if they do, yeah, they'll probably win, but they might get a torpedo, which will be very very nasty, and a fourteen-inch torpedo is no joke in eighteen eighties if it hits. And smaller ships, well, they've got six-inch guns, which are quite fit, quick firing, and it's got quite good field of fire, and if you get hit by one of those shells, you're going to know about it. You hit, get hit by a couple, you're going to really know about it. So it was... They're not really thought about. We talk about other ships. We talk about the Admiral-class battleships far more than we talk about these ships, because they sit in the middle, but they are part of the Royal Navy. They're part of the 1880s Royal Navy. And in many ways, this point is the point at which you get the genesis of what's going to come later. The smaller general purpose ship. Which eventually evolves into the general purpose destroyers in the interwars. The idea, the concept is there from the 1880s. All right. Now, quickly, just quickly, please do remember, I am saying this to everyone, and thank you for watching. Thank you for, if you fancy joining Discord or anything like that, you'll find links down below, including to Spreadshirt. The reason I've got this up here is not because I'm advertising Spreadshirt, although it doesn't hurt if I am an advertising Spreadshirt, and the designs I have there, and there are more than this, hopefully, by the time this goes out. But I'm talking about the bragging rights bet I have with my aunt. Now, as you don't know, I've never watched one of my videos before, this will be a surprise. But my family is big on how we show our love is basically making bragging rights bets with each other. Anyway, my aunt has betted me that I won't make it to 13,000 subscribers by December the 31st, 2021. And if I do. She and my uncle will be pictured wearing Blackburn, Blackburn, this one, face masks. Now, as I'm on 6,500 subscribers, actually below 6,500 subscribers, when I'm recording this, I'm on 6,482, he says, reading it, he says, quickly reading off his dashboard. And. Therefore, I am miles away. I need to double, more than double, my subscribers to get there. But, if you like the videos, please like, please share all the social media platforms you can and try and get people in. And thank you. What else do we have coming up? Well, we'll have had Adris Sale, which will have gone out before this goes up. And then we've got the British geostrategic situation in the 1960s. That's also gone out before this has gone up. But I'm leaving doing all these because it's worthwhile knowing what is going to be going on longer term. And then this is part of the September shipbuilding trends of the 1880s to 1950s, which is going on the 3rd to the 13th of September. Yes, there is going to be 10, 11 videos on this topic. And starting on the 11th, so overlapping, but that's because I want the Carl Donitz one to go out on the Carl Donitz's birthday. Just in case I'm not able to do the lives, which I want to do in, in sort of in the middle of September, i.e. the shipbuilding of the 1880s to 1950s, and uh, the 
Don, it's his birthday special, just in case I'm not. I'm making sure the long patrols overlap. Chiefs of Staff of the Axis Navies. Which is going to be cool, hopefully. So it's fingers crossed. Right. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you have, please like. If you would like to hear more, please subscribe. There's a subscribe button down below. And there'll be one coming up as well on the end screen. And there's also a little bell down below. If you press the little bell down below to the right of the screen, you will get updated when a live comes out. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed. And um, take care.